do like a welcome? Are we good? Awesome. Okay, well, welcome to the, wow, this is loud, the Sunday School Parent Meeting. And um, you guys all have a sheet of paper. And uh, for anybody who is not here, uh, if you want this email to you, please uh, let me know. Uh, my email is hodge underscore mar at yahoo.com. Uh, I am more than happy to share this with you. Um, if you've got students or children in Sunday school, I will go ahead and try and get that emailed out to you this afternoon. Okay, so I want to just for, first start by pointing out kind of a, a mission or what kind of what we want to focus on um, as far as Sunday school goes. We really want to uh, focus on making healthy connections by listening to our members of our Sunday school class. We want to learn about God, and then we also want to share our stories with each other. And so we are uh, planning to have more of an intergenerational um, type of Sunday school class um, this year. So we'll have pre-K through 12th grade, plus some adults um, volunteering who will come down and join us this year for Sunday school. Uh, so we have a basic format uh, that we will go off of this year, and we also have, oh, sorry, I've got some words on here that I should have uh, maybe left out. I kind of did some copy and pasting last week. Uh, but the first week that we have Sunday school, we are going to do a Bible story, and then uh, there is also a reader's theater in the Shine curriculum, which we will be using as well. Um, so the kids will be learning about the Bible story, we'll stay on that theme for a whole month, um, then they will be doing a reader's theater and acting out the Bible story together. Uh, week two, we'll review our Bible story, and then we'll play some games. Uh, Deb and I are working on coming up with some fun games um, to do with the kids. Um, one thing that uh, we've been talking a lot about is, you know, kids typically like bingo, so we thought we might get a Bible bingo uh, game and start by playing that. And then, you know, kids, kids are really good at telling us what they like. So we want to listen to the kids and pull in some of those games that they enjoy doing as well. Uh, week three, we'll review the Bible story again, and then we will do a craft. Uh, Deb has a really good idea. I don't know if you want to come up and talk about that idea that you have that we may start out with this year, or I can just kind of mention that a little bit. Would you rather I... Okay. <laughs> so we have kind of have some ideas of doing an ongoing craft. So um, that third week for several months in a row... Uh, we may be doing an ongoing craft. The first one um, kind of involves a scene that is sketched out for the, the kids, and then we'll have a bunch of crayons. So if, if you guys have old crayons at your house that you are not using anymore, please, please bring them. Because <laughs> we could... There's plenty of crayons in this church. We have plenty of crayons. That's awesome. Awesome. We want the old broken ones. <laughs> So it'll be, will we glue them or just place them? Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna, she's gonna sketch out a scene and then we'll have colors on the scene that we want. And so the kids will peel the crayons, break them up, and then put them where the right color is. And it'll make a really pretty picture. And then uh, we'll put some of that epoxy. Is it epoxy? over that and it will be in a frame and so we thought that would be kind of a fun craft to start out with with the kids and it's something that you know we could keep it and save it and sell it at MCC if we wanted to we could do an auction within the church um, but each group of kids is going to work on on their own so not each kid won't have their own but each group will work on it together um, we could even just put them up and display them in the church. There's all kinds of ideas that we have that we can do with it. And so we may um, try to get input from the kids as to what they want to do with them when we're finished. And then week four, 
the class is going to spend interviewing a member of the congregation. And Deb has done this before uh, as a summer Sunday school class where um, that has included, that's been more intergenerational. Um, and so the kids get to go and they get to ask one person in the congregation and it will likely be somebody who is downstairs volunteering during that month. Um, a series of questions. And we thought about having just like a, a silly question that we could ask them. Um, and then once we have our screen and projector up, like that might be something that we share the next Sunday with the rest of the congregation. So the whole entire congregation can get to know that one person a little bit better. Do you have anything you want to add to that? I know you do a hands-on prayer as well. Um, is that, that towards the end of that interview? Yeah, so that's kind of a fun week four thing that we plan on doing. And then for week five or the weeks where there are congregational meetings, um, and maybe not all of Faith Formation knows this, but we've kind of talked about this, um, that uh, Tim uh, really wants to arrange um, some special speakers to come in and talk uh, with the kids or a, a little, I don't know, he wanted to do a little trip somewhere to um, see something that somebody else has at their house. And so we'll get permission for that, um, for anybody who, who wants to attend that. Um, and then if, if, if the younger age kids, you know, if that's not of interest to them, then Deb and I will have something that we do with them during that time. So that'll be, if there's ever a week five in, in that month or, um, I know November, we have several congregational meetings, and so there's about three weeks in November where those occur, so those, that time will likely happen in November, and we will communicate with you ahead of time as to what that will be. So the basic setup for each week, uh, we'll be meeting in the fellowship hall downstairs. We want to have five of those round tables, and then we plan to have different age groups at each table. So we'll communicate with, with the kids downstairs that, you know, if there's already a high schooler at that table, see if we can get, you know, a middle school kid or an elementary kid, kid and a preschool um, kid at that table and try to mix it up a little bit. And then also one of our adult volunteers will be at each one of the five tables. Uh, we plan on, and, and, you know, these times will be adjusted kind of as we get going. <laughs> and we tweak uh, our Sunday school. So we're thinking about 10 to 15 minutes for breakfast. And so we've got several people who agreed to bring in breakfast for each week and we have those highlighted on a list. And Brad will talk about that in a little bit um, to where we want them to bring something in. Uh, if there are allergies, we'll try to have some allergy friendly alternatives as well for kids um, who are downstairs. And then we want to have about a 30-minute um, lesson activity time. It might be a little more than that or a little less than that, depending on the week. And then we want to have about 15 minutes uh, where we spend some cleaning up. And then we also want every child to have a journal. So, you know, if they're real young, they can draw pictures. If they're older, they can write in it. And so it'll be, you know, something based on the Bible story or another topic that we um, feel like is maybe important for them to put down on paper. So um, that, oh, and our rules, we're going to have very simple rules down there. We just want kind words and kind actions while we're downstairs. And we'll have those rules posted. Uh, we may have a little cleanup routine for the kids or a setup routine. So, like, if it's breakfast time, we may say, okay, the youngest kid gets to go get the silverware. You know, the oldest kid gets to throw away, you know, the trash or recycle or, you know, something like that. So we'll try to involve everybody um, in all aspects of that Sunday school time. So I'll have Brad come up and talk a little bit about volunteers and teachers. So I think most of us in this room have uh, been a Sunday school teacher in the past and know what a pretty intimidating time commitment that can be. Um, and with the kind of the reduced enrollment that we've had in Sunday school over the past few years, 
I know there have been weeks where Adam and I in the Midler class have showed up there and not a single student or it's just one of our kids that is attending. And so um, something that we were trying to do to get more people from the congregation involved was to lighten that load and not be such an intimidating time frame to commit to. Uh, so when we sent out a survey, bless you, sent out a survey earlier this year uh, asking folks who would be interested, uh, we got several uh, folks from different age groups that wanted to, to help us out with this. So each month we'll have five volunteers that either myself, another member of Faith Formation, or our Faith Formation coordinator uh, in the future will be reaching out um, to make sure that we can have people at each of those tables, have an adult at each of those tables. Uh, two of those folks will kind of be the lead teacher. So we'll have about seven total adults and parents. You are welcome to attend any time that you want um, uh, if you have that opportunity. Uh, so those volunteers will get contacted and they'll have uh, kind of what the month will look like um, on that email. And if they are unable to attend uh, a certain Sunday, they will be asked to find a replacement for themselves. Um, we didn't really want to put that on the Faith Formation Coordinator or other members of Faith Formation uh, for that particular time frame. And then one of those volunteers will be interviewed on week four, and so that was part of the survey as well. Uh, and uh, the two teachers, just to make sure that we're following safe, safe sanctuaries, uh, can't be related um, for that time frame either. Uh, but we're excited about it. Uh, it's going to be very different than what we've ever done before, and I think for some folks that's maybe frightening, but for others it's really invigorating to be able to see something new uh, to get different generations of people involved in faith formation in this church. Thanks. Okay, so down um, under the other information, uh, we are using a Shine intergenerational Sunday school curriculum. That curriculum has 13 total lessons. We have seven months um, where we do have Sunday school, and so we will, we will pick out seven of those lessons and focus on one lesson per month. Um, we will have Circles of Grace be the month of February, and so that is where Brad and Adam and Jill, we're hoping Brad, I know Brad and Adam will, uh, right, Adam? Okay, and Jill and uh, possibly Bethany will come down and teach that month, and we'll have kind of that Circles of Grace theme for that month. Uh, Sunday school lesson outlines are available for teachers to use, so there's one that's been constructed for every week, that's something that if teachers want to use them, um, the skeleton plan is there. Uh, when Deb and I teach the next couple of months, um, we will have some example ones that'll be filled out. So if you're teaching, you can come back and, and look at those to kind of see how we set up each week. Um, any adult who is planning who we asked to volunteer to teach uh, for those months, you guys are welcome to come down and just observe Sunday school and how it's being run. And, you know, we have our outline right now on how we want to do it. Um, we don't know how it's going to go until we're down there actually doing it. And so we will likely make tweaks and, you know, um, tighten a few things up in the next couple of months. Uh, we are starting Sunday school, I believe it's September 18. Um, ideally, it'd be nice to start our month at the first Sunday of the month. Uh, we'll be able to start that in December. So we'll have week one and week two be the last two weeks of September. Week three and week four will be the first two weeks of October. And then week one and two for the second month will be the last two weeks of October and then whatever weeks in November that we don't have congregational meetings. So it's going to be a little bit different um, starting out, but hopefully they're beginning in December. Um, and I know we've got Christmas there, but we'll at least be able to start at the beginning of the month. Um, let's see. 
Yep, so I just kind of talked about point D right there. Uh, there is a QR code on your sheet, and that is the, the QR code for the medical release and waiver of liability, so you can fill all that out online. If you want me to email you the link, I can let one of us know, and I'll share that document with you, and you can just click on that. On the back side of that sheet is a QR code and link to the Faith Formation Google Calendar. So one thing that we really want to be able to keep up with this year is having all of our events on a calendar <laughs> that you can, um, you know, use or have pulled up on your own Google Calendar. I feel like most of well, not most, I don't know, a lot of people now <laughs> use a Google Calendar to organize their daily lives. I know I do for work, and then I also put my personal stuff on it. So then if I could just add in the BCMC Sunday School one, I can pull up when events are happening. So what we have on there right now is our Sunday School dates for the next, I don't know, I think a few, next couple of months. And we'll be adding to it all year. We have when uh, the, oh boy, John and Heather, help me out, Wednesday night programming for the middle schoolers. What's that called? Wednesday night club. Oh, just Wednesday night club. <laughs> I thought there was a special name for it. <laughs> okay. So we have the six weeks on there when uh, the Wednesday night club will happen and the time. And then after that, it, I think it's Menno Singers and then Menno Ringers. Once I get the schedule for the Wednesday night dinners, we'll put that on there as well. Um, trying to think what else. We've got our pumpkin patch date on there. I haven't called them yet to confirm it, but we've got the date that we want on there for October 17, I believe it is. So uh, we'll just keep keep adding to that and you guys can go and refer to that calendar when you want to know when something is happening. We'll get our Wednesday night um, senior high events put on there as well. Are there any questions? Will there be safe sanctuaries training? Yeah, that's something that I need to get uh, with Jill on. Uh, safe sanctuary training, we're kind of wanting that to happen the end of September, early October, since Deb and I are teaching. We're not too concerned about that at this point. Like, we can sit down and watch something prior to and, and you know, sign off on whatever we need to sign off on for that. But um, the adult volunteers do not need to take safe sanctuary training because they're down there. They're part of the Sunday school class. We've got our two teachers will be there the entire time. We will make sure that we communicate with the adults down there that if a child has to use the restroom, that one of the teachers needs to go with them or a teacher and another person. But there always has to be somebody safe sanctuary trained and, you know, we stay, we stay outside. <laughs> you know, we're not going to go in and be super helpful. You know, kids are pretty independent. Um, the ones that we have, Jake and Gabby, I feel like are pretty independent. They can do that by themselves. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, so we are aware of that. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> They're good. We're good. So, you know, if, if somebody younger comes, we may reevaluate that and um, talk with, talk with the APRC committee, I'm going to get that right, <laughs> about how we handle some of those things. So did I answer your question? Okay. Anything else? Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah, okay, let me see. I can answer your last question, then I might have to have you re-tell me your first one. But, um, okay, so one thing that I've done on the calendar is that Saturday before, I kind of have written in the names of who's teaching those months. And so as we ask people to volunteer to teach, I want to have their names up there so so you see that. And your other question, remind me. Uh, was basically like, will Sunday school teachers have a, a crib there that, that, that they can email to? That they can oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, one of the things I asked Monica to add to that survey, and I'm not sure if she has yet or not, when I looked last, it wasn't on there, but I, I'm sure it's probably on there by now. I want to know how you guys prefer to be contacted, you know, by text or by, by email or phone. But I know when Tim sent out emails for the senior high um, to parents, we tended to have more attendance. Um, and I think it would be nice to know what we're going to talk about that week. So, yeah, that's something that we can definitely, definitely do. And I think that could be part of the faith formation coordinator mm -hmm. kind of as they get into that routine of what it looks like is to have that as one of the, yeah. the things that they do. So that's a good idea. And we have our weeks lined out. So, you know, they could, they could email out the theme for the month and, you know, what we're doing that week. Would you rather have it weekly or would you rather have something monthly? Um, I'm probably not the person to ask if we're going to be here. Yeah. So, I, I know. People, people who should be asked that question are probably people who are on the fence about coming. Yeah. I think we, weekly would be nice just because mm -hmm. like week one and week two are kind of different looking in yeah. terms of what the structure of that day will be. Mm -hmm. And I think especially with getting started with something new, it's nice to have some of that repetition. Okay, we're doing, we're doing a skit this week. Okay, we're doing crafts this week or games or whatever. Yeah, so. Yeah. 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 No, thanks for... Yeah, thanks for saying that you would appreciate that. I mean, I know we've kind of talked about it briefly, but we haven't talked about it a whole lot. So that's something we'll definitely add to that. And we've talked about it a little bit for Wednesday nights as well. Any other questions? Or? Just with the logistical one about the breakfast, and mm -hmm. do you say you have people um, bringing that? Is that the teachers that are going to do that? No, it's going to be the adult volunteers. Okay. Most because the kids would leave the sanctuary immediately and come down. Mm -hmm. and, and we weren't always there. The people that were in charge of the lesson were also the ones doing the teachers were doing the snack. And so right. um, then we had the cleanup and then, I mean, those kind yeah. of logistical things um, were the issues that we had. Okay. So, Yeah, the whoever we've asked from the adult, adult volunteer will come down there and do that. We've kind of assumed that kids will come down right after the church service, so we wanted to spend that 15 minutes doing the breakfast where kids are starting to come down and they're you know they're in there. We may have a, you know if if everybody gets down there and they have about five minutes of time together where everybody's eating at the same time or finishing up or whatever. Um, we've talked about having like a, a table question or something for them to talk about at the table while they're eating breakfast. And then we'll ask everybody to help with the cleanup part of it. That's the plan right now. It may change. <laughs> I may need to talk to you more about how you did that. And, and just having different people doing it. Mm -hmm. They may not have their own team. So that's good. Right. So if... That's good to know because maybe we need to write out a procedure for that. Okay. Thank you. Anything else?
Anything else? All right. Well, thanks for coming today. Hopefully we will have a successful Sunday school year. Uh, one thing I am asking, I do want from the adult volunteers who come down, and I, would, I need to figure out a way to get this from the kids who are in Sunday school. I do want feedback from them because if, if we're going to change how we do anything or if they don't like something and want something to be done differently, we can take that into consideration when we meet as Faith Formation. Um, so feedback to me this year is going to be extremely important. All right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>